thing, that will then take its course. But the, the bottom line here is that migratory insects, even ants, uh, will be disorientated. All right. So give us a call, 8830782. I've got a whole lot of questions I want to ask Barry. And uh, yes, they do uh, revolve around cell phones, children, masts in playgrounds, and uh, masts in buildings and things like that. Should we be concerned or should we just lie back and uh, take it as it's given to us? SMS Jenny Cruis Williams now on 31702. 31702. Now, Barry, before we get on to, uh, on to <laughs> cell phone masks and things like that, what does the World Health Organization say about what you are saying? The World Health Organization, it's a very good question. The World Health Organization was challenged by the European Parliament very recently uh, on their stance. The World Health Organization replied in writing to the European Parliament, and I have their document here. The first thing they said was that they will not give any form of comment or estimate of the impact of this health-wise until 2015. And they also said that they only started to study the effect on children last year. So that may be in 15 years, 14 years time. So the World Health Organization are not actually saying anything. So, so, I mean, how could they have been so lax as not to start? Because the rumours have been going around for years and years and years and years. One would have liked to have thought uh, that they would have picked up earlier on. There are, to my knowledge, uh, legal issues here where parliaments are questioning the decision-making processes of the World Health Organization and this is an opinion uh, that there may be industrial influences with the committee that helps run the World Health Organization and I do know there are legal questions headed that way but um, Everybody, including myself, is bemused because a few years ago we looked at the World Health Organization's database on electromagnetic radiation of the microwave communication frequencies and 80% of all of their data showed either uh, the cancer increases, neurological disorders, what they call microwave syndrome, which is electrosensitivity. 80% of their research showed this, but they were doing nothing about it. What is the Bioinitiative <coughs> Report? The Bioinitiative Report, it really flew in the face of the World Health Organization's uh, lack of support. 2000, no, I tell a lie, uh, several scientists from around the world, leading scientists from around the world, spent many years studying the latest 2000 research papers. They cross-checked them, they read them, they looked at them, they argued, they discussed. And the scientists who wrote the bioinitiative report they decided on a safe level that would include children and they listed all of the illnesses and they came out with this safe level that they considered with today's knowledge today's experts a safe level for children and everybody else for a lifetime's exposure and they published this safe level uh, and Anybody can read it and anybody can use it. To my knowledge, it's been picked up by six or eight governments so far. Two were already on it, uh, and I think another six have decided to ignore the international guidelines, ignore the World Health Organization, and to go straight to the bio-initiative safety level. How long does it before you start showing, um, for instance, if, if there's a mast in a child's playground and uh, you've got children going there every single day apart from school holidays, how long does it take before some of them might start showing symptoms? And those can be things such, such as nausea, for instance, or dizziness or rashes and things like that. Uh, are th those are the initial stages, are they not? Absolutely correct. Uh, the... 3%, we know from experiments from around the world, the minimum that will show signs instantly 
almost instantly, within minutes, <coughs> uh, is 3%. So if you have 100 children in your school, three of them will show signs straight away. The Nobel Prize winning Irish Doctors Association believe it's probably nearer 15%, but I, I'm settling for three at the moment. So we know 3% initially, and then depending on the child's state of health, uh, and a few other factors, uh, probably within 18 months, a few years, you will then have the, the more serious symptoms starting to show. What about houses that are in the proximity of, of that particular mast, for instance? Absolutely the same, ma'am. Absolutely the same. Uh, children are everywhere. The, the, the problem we find with schools, and may I just say that, may I, may I just come in with a piece of research, mm. please? Uh, in 2003, there was an international study of schools in just France and Spain, and they found 130 leukemia clusters in schools that had transmitters in the playground. Just a few years later, I was invited to address the Welsh Parliament, and I found another 47. So. By the end of 2006, we ha between England, France and Spain, we had over 200 leukaemia clusters in schools of 11 children or more aged 11 or under. That is over 2,000 children. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that is a, an alarming statistic. What about adults? What about teachers? What about people living in the houses nearby that are not children? The report I wrote, and, and I'm having it published soon, but I, I've left copies behind. Uh, I referenced the report that looked at all the schools, and they did find that there was elevated breast cancer, uh, the first symptom in a lady tends to be breast cancer if it's going to be serious. There was elevated breast cancer in the teachers, uh, psychological problems, uh, general ill health. So my, uh, when I've travelled, and I have been right around the world, <clears throat> and I say to any school, and any of your listeners now um, can check this, anyone, I say, if you have a transmitter in your school, I will guarantee, absolutely guarantee two things. First, the sickness level will go up, and that includes staff, and the behaviour of the children and the exam results will go down. All right, well, that's a, that's a huge claim. What, hap what, what area are we talking about? What, what circumference are we talking about? F no mobile transmitter should be within a kilometre and a half of a school if it is an ordinary transmitter putting out an ordinary 20 watt microwave beam. It should n certainly not be within a, uh, a kilometre and a half of any school. If it's in the middle of a high street and it's on top of a two-storey building? No, it shouldn't be there. There is no reason for microwave transmitters to be near people. They can be moved far away from people. The only reason they're near people is because it saves the company money. Uh, they're easier to maintain. If you have to maintain a transmitter, it's easy to pull up with a lorry and a ladder and go straight up than into the middle of a field with a four-wheel drive truck and reach one there. It's purely to do with profit. Let's go to Eric. Hi there, Eric. You've got a question about different frequencies? Yeah, hi, Jenny. Hi, Barry. Um, Good afternoon, Generally sir. accepted microwave frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, and I guess that's where most of the damage occurs. And I'm just wondering how far you have to move away from that frequency on either side before you can minimize damage, or is there no effect? Uh, all of the, the microwave frequencies go from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. And it's not so much the frequency, sir, it's the pulse frequency or the modulation frequency that they put with it. That tends to do most of the, the, most of the damage. So it's not a question of the microwave frequency per se, it's a question of all of the pulse and modulation frequencies that carry the pictures, uh, the movement, the sound, those are the ones which are known to cause the damage. And I, I'm not blaming the industry here. Uh, they, they invent something 
and there is nobody around that will say to them, hang on, you are picking a particularly dangerous pulse frequency or modulation frequency, change it. Um, all the industry has to do is turn to a government or turn to somebody like me and say, would you comment? Um, the, the problem is solvable, but to answer your question, sir, uh, it's really the modulation or the pulse frequency, the carrier waves that they put in.